Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this short video, we are going to be summarizing the governing equations for steel beam columns, and our main uh, source of reference is going to be the American Institute of Steel Construction uh, Construction Manual, so the basically the big steel manual, Chapter H, okay? So um, let's go ahead and get started for biaxial loading. we have the following AISC governing equations. So um, for, quote, large axial loads where you have a PU over VCPN ratio greater than or equal to 0.2, our governing equation is going to be PU over VCPN plus 8 ninths times MUX over VBMNX plus MUY over VBMNY. And this interaction should be less than or equal to 1.0. So this is still a form of an interaction equation. You have the axial component and you have the flexure component. And again, together, when you add them together, should be less than or equal to 1. And this is the interaction equation we use whenever you have PU over VCPN is greater than or equal to 0.2. So the first thing you need to do is check this inequality here, PU over VCPN, and if it turns out to be bigger than or equal to two, then you enter into this interaction equation, okay? Now, um, what happens if, v, if uh, PU over VCPN is less than two? Well, we can say the following. We can say for, quote, small axial loads, where we have a PU over VCPN less than 0.2, we would use the following interaction equation, PU over two VCPN plus MUX over VBMNX plus MUY over VBMNY must be less than or equal to 1.0. So again, for for um, the other case where PU over VCPN is, is uh, less than 0.2, we use this second interaction equation. And so in um, AISC, if you've got your steel manual handy, um, these equations are referenced as such. I'm gonna write it off here to the side. This is AISC equation um, H1-1A, and then the second one is AISC equation uh, H1-1B. And of course, you know, there's all kinds of great textbooks out there that um, summarize this as well. And please note that this is specifically for LRFD. There's some accompanying interaction equations for each of these cases if you are interested in um, ASD, but this is for the LRFD situation. Now, the other thing I wanna uh, make a point of in this video is at the very beginning of the video, we said for biaxial loading. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten that I threw that word out there. What does biaxial loading mean? Well, what that means is you have um, an axial load effect um, given by the PU that's applied to your member. And then you also have two moment effects. You have a moment about a cross-sectional x-axis and another moment, uh, MUY, about a cross-sectional y-axis. So the way you can kind of visualize this, I'm gonna just go ahead and um, sketch, a, sketch an example of a column here. I know this is a rectangular column, but you know, you're probably more likely to see a W shape of some sort. Um, but let's say we have a rectangular column. We'll have a, a PU here, that's our axial force. And you know, it's on the bottom surface two to be in equilibrium. And then we're gonna have a, um, let's say that this right here is our cross-sectional y-axis. 
and here is our cross-sectional x-axis. So these, these moments, when you have a biaxial case, the, um, the moment about the x-axis is shown like this. Okay, oops. And so you have this little rotation, this moment about the x-axis. This is, remember, this is supposed to be a 3D drawing, and that's my MUX. And then you'll have another moment that's orthogonal to that or perpendicular to that, and that's going to be here, M-U-Y. So if you were to kind of take a look at a cross section here, and you have the yy axis and you have the xx axis you're considering um, moments that could appear about each of these axes you have a moment about the y axis and you also would have a moment about the x axis now this is these interaction equations account for the possible presence of both of these moments but you know if one of these moments is zero no problem you know you you evaluate the situation and let's say the muy term is zero let's just say you have uniaxial bending then one of these entire terms would just go to zero no problem at all so these are just meant to be general equations that account for the possibility of having two moments about your two um, cross-sectional axes. But if you don't, then one of these two terms will just be zero and you'll just left be left with your axial term and then one of the moment terms, okay? So that concludes this video where we um, are summarizing our uh, governing equations for um, steel beam columns. Um, another, um, another thing we're gonna talk about more in, in one of my other videos is uh, chapter six of AISC gives design charts. So um, those of you who may be um, already kind of familiar with some of the design charts and tables, uh, design charts and tables in the steel manual, um, those are there, we can use them. Chapter six um, is basically tailor-made for beam columns for axial loading plus bending. Um, so we're gonna talk more about that in one of our later videos. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks for watching.